Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth, where I talk to artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals. Occasionally, I have a co-host or co-founder of the podcast with me, but uh, lately, I've been doing it by myself again. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. today, is today I got the co-founder and uh, originator of The Creative Truth back on the pod, Mr. Therese Mischer. He's currently uh, in law school, and so it's been a big transition out of the podcast realm. Uh, what's new in your world, man? I am. I'm a law school student. And I'm always here in spirit, man. You have. I gave you that microphone, so I'm always here in spirit. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I'm forever <laughs> indebted to you. <laughs> Yeah. So what, 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 what led to that? Like kind of uh that's a huge change to just like go to law school, but what were, what kind of led up to that decision? Yeah. Uh, after I left Savannah, I basically took a year off and just, just kind of took time, basically took like a year to kind of just figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I didn't want to keep jumping from business to business and um, venture to venture anymore. I wanted to like do something for the rest of my life. And I wanted to do something that was going to be impactful on, uh, you know, people in my community, just something where I could have some, some influence and power and do real good in the world and like, see it. And I think my podcast in some ways are doing good because I'm able to share a message and share a story. So like podcasting is doing good in the world, but it just wasn't, I don't know, wasn't tangible enough for me uh, at the time. So, yeah, so I wanted to, uh, I wanted to switch, uh, talk to my wife about it. She wants to be able to work less law school, you know, becoming a lawyer will allow her to work less if she wants to uh, and deal with the kids. So that's that, that was it, man. Money and power. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about law, too, is you can still bounce around. I mean, there's a lot of places you can go with, you know, a law degree or a law background. I mean, w- 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 the last I heard, um, uh, you're thinking more about um like defense and and well no where you want to prosecute i don't remember what what, where are you at with where you might want to go with the law degree i I do want to do criminal i will have an internship this summer uh working with a public defender uh so that will give me an idea of what i really want to do but i definitely want to be in the criminal courtroom i definitely want to be trying cases or be a part of a team that's trying cases Uh, i don't know which side yet um because there are innocent people or you know uh uh, not destitute, but people who just don't understand the system who need help from competent attorneys uh, where they might have a minor uh, inf- infraction or there might be a case of mistaken identity and they need help. And I want to be the guy to help them. But there's also bad guys that need to go to jail so I could do prosecution, too. Uh, it's just um, it just depends on where, you know, the best opportunity is once I start. What's it like being the old man in the, the classroom there? Oh, man, it's fun. It's fun because I don't care. <laughs> like I don't I don't care about the drama, like the little inner workings. But because like being in law school, you're in a you're almost in a different world once you walk on the campus because it's a whole microcosm of just anxiety and stress and competition. And we're graded on a curve, so you have to compete against your classmates, which is not the real world. Like in the real world, you'll be working with your friends and your colleagues, right? But in law school, you have to compete against each other. And they make you do that. Um and so everybody is all kind of it's at the point where it's like two i'm on a trimester schedule so we have three three semesters a year three terms a year and we just finished the second one so everybody got their second grade so at this moment a lot of people have been um leaving transferring some people have been uh kicked out due to you know academic probation and just not being able to meet the meet the grades um and it's just like a lot of drama, man. So people are losing friends, which is sad. I, I lost a friend um, who decided to transfer. And it's uh, it's sad. But I have an identity. By being the old guy, I have an identity outside of law school. You know? But a lot of the kids coming straight from undergrad, their identity is their GPA. It's how smart they've been their whole life. Versus me, it doesn't. Like, I'm doing well, but it doesn't bother me that I'm not the smartest kid in the class it doesn't bother me that you know there's a little little bit of drama going on so i'm a little more you know cool calm and collected than my my classmates are so i think that's the best part just being able to handle the stress and step back from the you know the uh zeitgeist of anxiety that's that's around the school 
Yeah, once you get out in the real world, you, you realize like your GPA, no one ever, it never comes up in conversation and right. you can, you can pigeonhole it. Like you could, or you could like force it in conversation. Oh, I have my MBA and it's like, I don't care. Like who cares where you went? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't the, matter. The, what, have, what have you done? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, mm-hmm. So like looking back on your career, since you do have that real world experience, you popped around, like what are some of the touch points in your career so far that kind of were like hinting towards the fact that maybe someday you would want to go into law? Um, starting my podcasting business. And then my first big client was the great trials podcast. They were super influential to me as like seeing just more so like how they were as people. Like I always thought of uh, lawyers as being just real scummy people, real, you know, I still think that <laughs> right. Yeah. And a lot of them are, there's no doubt about it, but yeah, but they are like the 1% of the 1% in a lot of ways. Like not only are they uh extremely successful uh financially, not only have they won you know millions and millions of dollars in big cases, but they're also like really good people. And they surround themselves with good people. So like when you meet them, they don't make you feel like you're less than them. They like less than them. When you meet them, they are like nice to everybody and they're working on really big cases, helping really small guys like the small guy I go against a big corporation and they win. So that, that was a huge influence. And then from there, I just kept met, meeting other attorneys who hear the podcast and they reach out to me. And then, I don't know, it was, it was just, you know, that was it. And then I, so I'll go from there, the great trials podcast. Then I start working with see you in court, another group of really uh, just incredible attorneys, but also incredible people. Uh, and then you go from there to hidden legal figures, which is probably my favorite project that i've done to date and it's uh it's a series it's two, we did two seasons me and Derek and alexander pope hidden legal figures we just got it back up uh in itunes so you can check it out but it was, it was following um lawyers and judges who were influential in the civil rights movement uh that nobody talks about and that most people don't know about you know there's way more than martin luther king uh that was you know a big deal like there was there were major players in the civil rights movement but that's really all we talk about is martin luther king but so from there i like met i learned about people who i thought i would want to emulate and who people who i could idolize because like imagine being in the 1920s and you're in a small town and you're a black lawyer trying to save a man from being hung you know what i mean against the mob and you have to go to the supreme court to get help to like stop them from hanging the guy but they don't care because it's a mob it's their town the sheriff's on their side so they hang the guy shoot him uh yeah i don't know it's anyway i've learned all about just how strong and brave uh these people were back in the day that nobody knows about and that's what i want to uh emulate in some in some way for sure yeah the thing the pitch i heard about that you told me about hidden legal figures is like for every advocate or a person that you you hear of somebody you know working towards civil rights in the South, but in the United States in the sixties, a, a lawyer or a judge actually had to make that law. So like, for example, yeah. LBJ, Lyndon Johnson had some questionable, like personal values, but he's the one that still passed the civil rights act. So like to make it a legal thing, there's all yeah. these people that no one knows their names and everything else. Um, yeah, so I, I love yeah. working on going up to Atlanta with you and working on that one. Do you want to plug great trials a little bit, um, a little bit more too? And and you said the other one, see you in court. I know less about that podcast. Yeah, that one's, uh, yeah. So great trials podcast. You can check that out on iTunes and see you in court, uh, podcast. You can check that out on iTunes also, uh, both great, the uh, Georgia attorneys in both cases, uh, great trials just talks about. Uh, mostly civil cases. So like uh, personal injury uh, and medical malpractice stuff and stuff like that. Uh, mm-hmm. But they're like really huge cases. So like millions and in some cases, hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. So they're covering like wh- how the attorney uh, built the case, found the client and, uh, you know, got the got the huge award. Um, see, you know, of course, a little bit different. They mostly talk. They mostly deal with like Georgia law specifically is two former state bar presidents um yeah state bar presidents of georgia and they interview um you know journalists they interview 
uh, attorneys from all different fields. They interview uh, just just a lot of cool people, authors, legal authors, even if they're not an attorney. Uh, so it's just I don't know. It's, it's a really cool podcast too because of the a variety of people that they speak to. You should definitely check it all out if you're interested in law at all. Anybody, the, anyone out there listening? Even if you're not interested in law, it is kind of like tangential to true crime stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. I I even producing a couple episodes, like I was definitely interested in what they were talking about, even though I yeah. am the last person who'd ever be, you know, interested in law or pursuing law, yeah. which I think you're you're crazy, but I, I love you and I respect <laughs> you for it. But yeah, I'm definitely so, a little crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I and I also think like, you know, one of your God given gifts is just talking to people and um you know, and I don't want to say getting information out of them, but like making people feel comfortable and learning about them and, and just like being a great interviewer or communicator really. So I I think, yeah, I think you're, I think like everything you've done with podcasting and in the communication realm, is going to like serve you well in law, wherever that takes you. So thanks man. I appreciate that. Tell me about um and tell me about like your new podcast concept that you're working on. Yeah, so I am in law school as we've mentioned several times. I am old. Uh I'm a black man if you're not watching this. <laughs> if you can't tell <laughs> from my uh from my speech, but black man, father, uh three beautiful kids. I've been married 13 years happily in quotation marks. Uh and I just really don't have anybody to relate to in school you know, on that level. It's, I have one other student that I can relate to, but I don't have any professors that I could go talk to for a while, ask questions of, um, and just really, I don't know, learn from. You know, there's no mentor I have. I have a colleague that I can get along with, and I have, I've made some great friends in school uh, that I can commiserate with and learn from and, and help, and they help me. Um, but on these, you know, same race, father, older, you know, like I just wish there was someone there that could like understand the, you know, where I'm coming from a little bit better. If that makes any sense. Uh, anyway, so from there, I said, OK, I have all these skills in podcasting. Let me start a podcast uh, for that. And maybe I can help find black male attorneys to be a mentor uh, to not just me, but anybody who's listening. Um, yeah. And I'm going to gonna call it brothers in law. So it it'll be coming out in a in a month or so. I have several interviews lined up. Great interviews with uh tremendous attorneys uh from all over. Right now it's the southeast, North Carolina and Georgia, but uh there there'll be a lot more coming. So I'm really I'm really excited about it. Yeah, when you first were telling me about it, I said, Yeah, I'll come on any time. And then I realized I mean <laughs> none of the criteria for what you, for what you're looking for. Yeah, no, not this time. No, no, no. <laughs> But um, like uh, so for for people out there listening, like something you, I mean, I actually went back and listened to the f- the very first episode of the Creative Truth. Ooh, yeah, you should delete uh, that one. It's, it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> I mean, you were fine. I was terrible. Like, it, but overall, like the sound was bad, the lighting was bad. Yeah. I mean, but it's it is yeah. cool to like see the progress of like how far mm-hmm. we've we both come and. And actually, it's like four years this year. By the time this episode drops, it's four years. Um, crazy. So whether you're in law or you're a videographer, you're in real estate or whatever, like why should people start a podcast? Hmm. It is. That is a good question, man. Why should people start a podcast? It depends on your goals. Um, the biggest thing, the biggest benefit I ever received from podcasting is the connections I made. I never made a ton of money podcasting except for, you know, with my clients. But as a podcaster myself, I never made a ton of money, but it's there. I just didn't pitch it well. But the biggest benefit is like on the back end. So if you want to build a network in a certain niche, or if you want to uh, build relationships in a certain area, a certain location, it's a a great way. If you're moving to a new city uh, and you don't know how to meet people, buy a $70 mic and a recorder and get on zoom and just start interviewing people. I've done it in uh, three cities now and it works every time. I just build these crazy connections with people because I'm podcasting and then they introduce me to more people. And, you know, before I know it, two years later, uh, I feel like I'm at home in the city. 
So that that's the biggest thing. And then if you want to start a business from there, now you have business connections. If you want to, um, you know, if you need, I don't know, something on your home fix, if you need to buy a home, now you have business connections. You have, you know, who to call and who to talk to. So it's like, it just makes it, makes it easier to, to make friends. It makes it easier to build relationships. It makes it easier to network. Uh, it makes it easier to, I don't know, just, just enjoy uh, life in a lot of ways. Because life is all about relationships, in my opinion, and building those relationships. So that's 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 why you should start. That's why you should start one. Yeah, I also think like sometimes it's kind of weird to just like have a a one hour conversation or whatever with somebody you haven't talked to in a long time, but yeah. you have the excuse of hey, let's make content, right? And so yeah. it's just a good way to like catch up with old friends and stuff like that too, who are doing like really cool stuff. I have a lot of really cool people that I'm. I've been friends with for a long time and I'm like, damn, that's so awesome that you're going to law school or whatever. You know, you're mm -hmm. there's there's one guy I'm trying to get on. He's a model in Japan. So look for that in a wow. future episode. Yeah. He just <laughs> he, he quit his chemistry chemistry degree and he's a model in Japan and he's getting married. Wow. He's staying over there. So if he comes on the creative truth, that'd be awesome. But uh Yeah, that'd be awesome. Maybe he can get me in over there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you'd love it. You'd be all about it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what the legal system's like over there. No, I'll, I'll quit. My, I'll quit my legal degree too if you can help me get become a model in Japan. It's never too late to pivot. That's right. <laughs> um. So, uh, I mean, um, I just wanted to say too, like, what one other thing that'll happen is like I'll meet somebody new in Savannah, and I'll be like, yeah, 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 this person's interesting. I'll Google them, and the first thing that comes up is like they were on Savannah Business Showcase, and like, <laughs> yeah. ah, he got to them first. So. <laughs> You were only here for like four years, but you left the mark in Savannah. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, man, it's, it's definitely my second home. I said it all the time. And my first big lawyer check, I'm going to buy a second home down there. Absolutely. A small one. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you can come hang out with me for the weekend. Yeah. What yeah. is, uh, what, what's been the biggest benefit for you with podcasting? Why do you think people should start a podcast? Um, well, so we, as the listeners probably, no, we haven't really done an episode in a year and some change and uh, because life, you know, um, I did. I have also found that um, it does take a lot more time than people think, but and, and the money isn't necessarily right there. But having not produced an episode for over a year, I logged into our distribution um, tool called Podbean, and I saw that over the last 30 days, we had 70 downloads. So okay. that means that more than two people per day are listening to episodes of this show we haven't done in a year and a half. And our it's not like our SEO is great or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, we just had people that were listening. And so if you listen to this show, I really appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you're yeah. part of the reason I'm doing this again. And um, I just kind of got to the point where I, I needed to take a break. As you know, I had a goal of doing 52 episodes, one per week in 2021. And I just, I just couldn't get there. I got, I got, I think it was like 10 short and just cause you know, my career and life and everything got in the way. But I started getting this itch, like, all right, I need to start. I need to start talking to people again, and so uh, I think it's made me more confident in front of a camera. I think it's made me more confident reaching out to people. Um, I yeah, I haven't you know made like a huge amount of money from it uh, yet. Uh, although seeing the numbers that of people that still listen is very encouraging. Um, I also think that. I like what you said about like, it depends what your goals are. Um, mm -hmm. I'd rather just build a network and talk to cool people than make a zillion dollars from it. So I think it's just worth my time doing anyway. Uh, even if we have to go on breaks and change hosts and, you know, just figuring it out. Like it's kind of just our platform to mess around with. And, yeah. uh, so it's, I mean, I've just had a great time with it and, uh, the, you know, the format's changed a bunch, but I, I don't know where it's going to go, but I think that there's a, a bit of a calling for it for me. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's been, it's been, and I, you know, I got to thank you for that as well. So come on, man, stop, stop. 
<laughs> Are you blushing? Stop it. No, I'm not blushing, but I would say uh, something uncouth. <laughs> Y'all, I, don't make I'm me trying to be, I know, I'm trying to be more uh, PC political, man. Yeah. Yeah. Try to be more yeah. political because I'm representing more than just myself now, my, my company. But anyway, yeah, we might uh, have to take some old episodes down. I don't know. <laughs> no, we might. <laughs> <laughs> we might. I've been thinking about that a lot. Uh, just <laughs> deleting everything, doing a complete wipe. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, so you think people should start a podcast? Why? In thirty seconds or less. So I what think that. Answer? Yeah. So what, I think people should start a podcast because everyone has knowledge about some subject matter. And there are other people that would benefit from knowing your experience, especially if you're maybe late in your career. I've heard this. I work with, okay, so I'll try and keep this 30 seconds or less. You have knowledge about your interests and your career field, and other people would benefit from knowing what you know, just from doing stuff. So, Mm -hmm. and even if you don't know everything, you just talk to people who do talk to other people and get their experience. I, I I think that diversity is forced creativity. It's, it's uh diversity of thought, whether that's age, race, gender, creed, uh, background, you know, religion, political affiliation, whatever. When you look at things from a different angle, you can, we can solve problems that way societally yeah. or on, in, a, in an organization, whatever. And so by, having a podcast and having guests on to deliver different viewpoints of the same problem, which is for us surviving and thriving as a creative professional artist or entrepreneur, um, we can just better what that looks like for anyone that's aspiring basically. So that's Mm -hmm. why you should start a podcast. Even if it's about like our friend Tersh, it's about HVAC and starting a service business or your secretary in an office, like what it's, what that's like, or a- anything. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what you do. I think that there is value in your perspective and your experience. So that's go right. out there. It's not hard. Like you said, seventy dollar microphone and a Zoom call. Yeah, it's worth. It's worth it. So Definitely. that's my pitch. Yeah, and if that doesn't work, now you know how to really succeed on OnlyFans. That's right. Yeah. If you got nice feet, you don't have to start a podcast. <laughs> so that that's really all I had, man. I just wanted to catch okay. up with you and uh, you know, just tell you how much I love you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, he's gone. I might have to edit that part out. <laughs> but anyway, no, uh, I should have left. I know. <laughs> Is there anything you want to add before we close out this one? No, I just want to re- reiterate to everybody out there listening. That's it's really cool that you listen and thank you. Uh, Tyler's been killing it. He's going to jump back in again and kill us some more. Uh, so continue to listen, and I will jump back in again at some point. And thank you. If you are curious uh, about podcasting, send me an email. I'll answer questions. I have all this knowledge I'm not going to use again <laughs> for, for a long time. So uh, I'm happy to answer questions about podcasting to anybody. Uh, emails free. Reach out to me. Um, and in two years, if you need a lawyer, call me. Awesome. Well, uh, in, in upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, we're going to talk to more artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. If you have episode get uh, feedback or guest suggestions, you can email me at wecreatetruth at gmail.com. If you're listening on iTunes, leave it, please leave us a good review. We're on all the major podcast platforms. And if you're not watching, uh, if you're just listening, you can watch us on YouTube. Uh, if you are watching, you know, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about uh, the fact that we're back. And uh, appreciate you all for listening. And uh, Raz, thank you again for coming on, buddy. And uh, yeah, we'll see y'all in the next episode.